Sneakers and Cleats, the podcast. Welcome back to the Sneakers and Cleats podcast. It is three well-postured men talking about sports for the next 45 (laughs) minutes. Um, I am sitting erect. Okay. Oh. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh. um, I think I'm sitting too close. <laughs> so what, I think that's a new record. 30 seconds in, we're already off the rails. Uh, July 18th, this is episode 117. Remember, download, rate, review, subscribe, use a five star rating, tell a friend, tell an enemy. Matt Roy, Don Harris, Chuck McAtinick. Yesterday was the worst day on the sports calendar. I will always contest that because it was the day after the All Star game, which means nothing's happening. No basketball, no football, no hockey, no baseball. We had There's basketball. Just, there was women's basketball, so that's important. Summer league. Uh, uh, that doesn't count. Um, oh, K- women's basketball counts more than summer league. Yes, because it's actually going towards win loss record. Caitlin Clark set the uh, WNBA assist record last night. Okay. <laughs> Wait, did you say that women's basketball counts more than summer league? Yeah. Okay, I just wanted because they're in the regular. I wanted, to mark that, and, I, wanted to get the time, I, wanted, I wanted to put the time code down. Any regular season counts more than summer league does. <laughs> any regular season. What? Okay. What? Yeah. I don't think that's a hot take here. Is it? It's a Gen X thing. I'm. I I, guess. First of all, I'm a millennial. <laughs> whatever. I'm not part of the Gen Z. Whatever. Anyway, I better be quiet. We got. <laughs> I, I will be canceled if I said what's true. Anyway, we have a. I saw. It. Never mind. I'll I'll talk to you about that later. Um, Don't tell ESPN and Bronny that it women's basketball is more important than Bronny scoring six points in a game. I'm trying to. It go, gets the headline. I'm trying to go as long as possible without talking about for, Bronny on this podcast. So uh, we're gonna. We finally got a price tag on a Lori Markkinen trade. We now know that it's going to take the heaven, the earth, the moon, and the stars to uh, get Lori Markkinen out of the Utah Jazz. So we'll talk about uh, what that would look like in a Spurs trade if they had decided to pull the trigger. And also we'll get into they re-signed Charles Bassey and Mamu. I'm not going to try and uh, pronounce the rest of his name because I'll get it wrong. I already pronounced Sohan wrong, so I'm not going to try that. Uh, so are they done making moves? Are they going to try for Markkinen? What's the ceiling of this current team? We'll talk about all that today. Plus, uh, Don's favorite subject ESPN's Top 100 uh, was released today. Top 100 athletes of the 2000s. One of our near and dear, Tim Duncan, rated in the top 20. Is that too high, too low? 100% scientifically. Just right. right? We'll talk about that. Plus, Chuck was at the All-Star Week on Monday. Got some fun stuff from the guys up there, so we'll talk to Chuck a little bit about that. But first, we start with trivia. You weren't here on Monday. We are done with the number game because we completed all the numbers. Okay. So now we're going to trivia. Oh, geez. Here's another good thing I'm good at. <laughs> you this one you you'll one. get. Also, Chuck, do you know you have your headphones around your neck? I do <laughs> because I noticed that I can not hear you guys speaking. Well, not everybody's hooked up to my headphones. Oh, so okay. Just leave it at that. <laughs> all right. Deal. So, um, anyway. Technical s- issues. Plus, I don't want to mess up my hair. <laughs> great hair, great hair. Um, what anyway, hair so this left? is our trivia question. We're going to ask the trivia question now. We'll go through a segment. We'll answer the trivia question. I think I made it a little too easy today. Which Dallas Cowboy player was the first player and the only player in NFL history to be named the Super Bowl MVP from a losing team? Give everyone a second to think about it. Everyone at home, chime in. It's too easy. I think it's a little easy. Monday's was a little harder, so I'll, we'll go with that. But... Anyway, that's the question. The only player in NFL history to be the Super Bowl MVP on a losing team. So, answer that here in a little bit. But first, we'll get to the Lori Markkinen stuff. You know, wait, hold on, hold on. Yes. Last week, when you asked the trivia question, then we waited forever to answer. Monday. God, whenever that was. God, it seems like a (laughs) month ago. Uh, We were, I I was getting texts from people that said, I thought you knew the answer. And they were mad that I wasn't jumping in to answer right away. So, should we answer right away? If you know it right away, no, let's wait because I want to. I okay. want everyone else to tune in and, and answer as well on the in the comments and stuff like that. So, if you guys know it, I guarantee you do know this one actually because I think even I knew this one and I'm not even old. So, um, yeah, we'll wait for everybody. Chuck, Chuck, and Don know the answer. Everybody. I I do not know the answer off the top. Yeah, of my you head. do. No, I don't. I mean, if you say it, I'll know it. But you'll know it. Okay. Now I'm not going to steal your thunder. Go ahead. And... <laughs> That's cool. Play along at home though. Play along at home. I think it's the only Super Bowl where the Cowboys wore their bad luck blue jerseys. Is it? Yeah. Super Bowl five. Yeah. All right. A little hint for you. Anyway, uh, we know 
what it will take to get Markkinen out of uh, Utah now. Uh, Shams is reportedly saying that it will take numerous first-round picks, numerous second-round picks, pick swaps, and young talent to get Markkinen out of Utah. They very clearly don't want to trade him. Uh, they were talking in terms of the Warriors, and it would take something along the lines of Brandon Pajemski, Jonathan Kaminga, multiple first-round picks, and multiple second-round picks to get for that trade to go through. Spurs don't have anybody that good. Devin Vassell is better than both of those guys. So yeah, well, the question one, one really, player. the question really is, is he worth that to a team like the Spurs, or is he more worth that to a team like the the Warriors, where they're trying to hold on and, and build a team for Steph's last run? I, I I think you just wait. You just you don't give them what they want. You just wait. They're going to have to either move him at the deadline, and if he wants to be there, he'll sign there, and then they can move him at the deadline, or if he doesn't want to be there and they want to get something in return, they'll move him at the deadline and the price might be cheaper. Yeah, I'm with Don. I mean, I think you've got to wait this thing out. If that's the asking price right now, then maybe that's the right price for the Spurs or another team, right? Because so we're talking what, based on you know what you see in the summer league going on, going on, the players in the NBA that can play are already in the NBA, right? I mean, some of these other guys, I mean, we're – you brought up Bronny earlier. I'll just leave it at that. I mean, there's more of the guys like Bronny in the summer league than there are going to be guys that are that can play like Markkinen. So if the Spurs feel like that was a guy that they felt like could play long term and be a guy worth paying a exorbitant amount of money and give up the assets to get him. And I say go for it, but Dev, we don't know if that's what they really think. Devin Vassell's the trade ship. It's not like they're asking for a Keldon or a Jeremy who have a little bit less trade value. They're asking, they would probably ask for, and they're rumored to be asking for Devin Vassell, who the Spurs are on record as being very, very high on. They love him and they love the fit next to Wemby as long as Vassell can mature a little bit basketball wise. So. They'd probably be asking for Vassell and Sohan. They would probably ask for both, correct? If they're asking yeah. for Kaminga and Pajemski, they'd probably yeah. But I think you could get out of it um, by just doing Vassell if you really like Jeremy that much. I I could see them dealing Vassell halfway through the season. Like, if you see how everything's meshing if with this Castle roster. If Castle really comes along. Yeah, 100%. Um, but if – let me give let me give this to you. If this is too much, say too much. If it's not, you know, if you're willing to do it, then say you're willing to do it. Vassell? Okay. 25 first round pick, not the not the Hawks pick, the Spurs pick in 25, Spurs pick in 27, Spurs pick in 29, pick swaps in the other two years, 26 and 28. No. So basically five firsts in Vassell. Not those firsts. I'm not giving up next year. Next year they're going to win 35 games. They're going to have a top 10 pick next year. I'm not giving up. But you're not giving up the Hawks pick. You're giving up the Spurs pick. Yeah, but the Hawks are going to be better than the Spurs. So the Spurs are the worst is the better asset. The Spurs are going to pick eighth, and the Hawks are going to pick twelfth. The Hawks aren't going aren't going to be twelfth. They're going to be better than the Spurs. No, they're not. Okay. <laughs> no, is that, I don't have a crystal ball. Right? Is, that, yeah. is, that too, is that too much, Chuck, for a player, th- for a player th- that you believe in? If they believe in him, well, no. If they believe in him, probably not. But again, do you believe that? Again, I mean, you're doing the math with that many picks and all that. I mean, I would, way too I would find it hard to believe that they would value him like that. That that is a lot. That is a lot. Yeah, I, I could, but that's what it's going to go for. Like, he's going to, he hasn't, he's basically going to sign his um, extension on August sixth, which is going to mean you can't trade for him until February 6th, but ironically enough, I believe that's the trade deadline is 6th or 7th or something like that. So you're going to have basically six months to evaluate this current roster and say, okay, Lori can make take us to from B to C. Because right now I think they're going from A to B with the guys that they and just rem- signed. <clears throat> and remember, you're going to have to sign him to a five-year max Well, he'll, he'll have already re-signed at that yeah. point. He'll, you'll, you'll be trading for the you'll contract. You'll be inheriting that contract. Yeah. That's a lot for Laurie Markin. I like him. I've always liked him. When he was in Chicago, I wanted him. But uh, that's – and not Devin. It's more the picks. Mm-hmm. Uh, depending, Like I would give up the 31 pick swap and those – but not 25 because the Spurs pick in 25 – and the Hawks pick in twenty five Spurs like they they could be like they were this year four and eight again, 
uh, or five and t- eleven. They're going to have two really good picks, and it's a better draft. It's a much better draft. So I'm not giving up those picks. I might give up some picks further down the road, Vassell and Branham or something like that. Uh, but man, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up prime picks. Not five of them. And that's what the price is going to be. I mean, look at Bridges and what they got. But you're gonna you're gonna end up. You've been talking just throwing her name out there. You've been talking about Devin Booker for forever. I'd you give want, up you that would, for Devin Booker. You'd give that up for Devin Booker. But Lori Markinen is younger than Devin Booker is. Yeah, he's less of a superstar, I would say. Yeah, but, much less. But he's got. He's still ascending. I would say Devin Booker is what he is at this point. He's yeah. already established. Yeah, Markinen is so, really good. I don't know. That's a tough one. But Chuck, could you see? Six months down the road. Basically, he's going to resign on, and if he doesn't resign, then he's done in a year anyway, and you can sign him in free agency. So let's just assume that Laurie Markkinen, and this is the general consensus around the league so far, is that Laurie Markkinen is going to sign on August sixth. He's going to have six months with the Jazz, and then they they're going to evaluate his trade value on on February sixth. If the Spurs start and they're twenty five and twenty at the at the February deadline, you see how this roster constructs itself. Is that a trade you would want them to make? For sure. I mean, I would argue that even if things aren't going well, you know, maybe there's value then at that point anyway. And maybe it doesn't serve the player marketing very well at the time because he'd be going to a, you know, team that's not going very far. But if you are trying to build your team long term, you know, it might be a, a little more, uh, you know, from the Spurs standpoint, you know, I could see even if you're not doing well, do something or make a splash trade even to start giving the fan base hope for the following year. Doesn't that Don, to, doesn't that to, also give you a little bit more um a look inside of where the picks are gonna end up being? Like if the Spurs yeah. suck, if the if the and if the Hawks suck by February sixth, you know you're gonna have at least two top six picks at that point. I, I so think, then it makes them even more valuable. Besides the draft picks, I think two things are in play, right? One is are the Spurs in pursuit of an unrestricted free agent who may want to come play with Wimby where you don't have to give up those assets to get a great player? So instead of giving the Jazz all this uh, assets, there might be a guy that they this, you know they say that we have a plan and we're doing this, we have Barnes and Paul, and they're going to go off the, off the radar and then we're going to – replace them with younger talent. There might be a guy that they've already determined is going to be an unrestricted free agent that they don't have to give up anything for Mm -hmm. as long as he wants to come here and play for Wimby because you can offer him all the money in the world. That's one. And the second one is Castle's development. If Castle by mid-season is a guy that you think is going to be better than Devin Vassell, then Vassell becomes expendable. Tell me if this is a bad comp. I look at Devin Vassell like I look at Drew Holiday. Or, sorry, uh, Stefan Castle like I look at Drew Holiday. Great defender. Yep. Developed a really good three-point shot. Sees the floor really well. It's kind of a do-everything kind of person. If he turns out to be Drew Holiday, it's one of the greatest picks in Spurs history. All right, let's get to the trivia answer real quick. Agree. Um, just to remind... To, <laughs> don't see it quite yet, though. To remember, or to remind everybody um, what the question was, which Dallas Cowboys player was the first in NFL history and the only in NFL history to be named Super Bowl MVP from a losing team? Bob, you want to go first? You got no takers. No takers? Wow. All right, Don, <clears throat> give us the answer. Chuck, number 54, not Randy White. And not Bob Lilly. Bob Lilly was uh, 74. Starts with an H. Yeah. You share a name with him. Chuck Howley. Very nice. Okay, see, I I get there eventually. Ding, 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 ding. (laughs) Chuck Howley had two interceptions and a fumble recovery. Without the hints, I never would have got that. And Cowboys... uh, Dominated the game. It was the fifth Super Bowl, right? Super Bowl five. Super Bowl five Against the Colts? First Super Bowl I ever watched. Really? Yeah. So that was the year before uh, they won with Stavik, correct? Yes. They won the uh, Super, Super Bowl, Bowl six. six against the Dolphins. And Stavik, I think, in was New the Orleans. MVP of that game. Yes. And Ditka scored a, Mike, uh, saw, threw a touchdown to Mike Ditka. Nice. All right. See? There's your trivia. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to have a little harder question on uh, on Monday. I've established and that. And then the Dolphins, which was, baseball for Chuck on Monday. which was interesting, is like the uh, – Don will probably get that too. <laughs> the Cowboys <laughs> lost five – and won six. The Dolphins lost six and won seven. 
Did the Colts lose four? No, they lost. Now you're just three. showing. You're just showing off now. Yeah. Shush. Yeah. Um, so the Spurs. <laughs> so the Spurs shush him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the Spurs also re-signed Mamu and Charles Bassey. That uh, brings their roster to 15 players. Chuck's favorite player on the Charles roster. Charles Bassey. Charles Bassey. Yep. Said it before, said it a million times. Good for him. Glad he got guaranteed money. Worked out great for everybody. So that brings their roster to 15 players. That pretty much cements that they're done for this offseason. They might make a small move here and there, procedural stuff, two-way players, stuff like that. But for the most part, their main core group, their 12, 15 players, pretty set. So right now... I don't know. Yeah, I, I think oh. there, I, I think there's still maybe some moving parts, too. How big of moving parts? Is it like getting Keldon. a shooter here every now and then? Yeah, I, I, mean, I think they're shopping Keldon. For... I don't know. What would you like to see? What would you What would you think and that Devin Booker, shop Keldon for? An equal player, <laughs> different position. <laughs> equal player, different position. Big guy. Like a stretch four, or yeah. you, or like an actual big, like a yeah. Jonas Valanciunas kind of big. Yeah, yeah. So big some guy. an enforcer. Yeah, interesting. Equal but, player, but don't they need guy. they need more shooting though? Keldon's not a shooter. But yeah, but and that's my but that's my point is like yeah. you trade Keldon for a shooter or trade him for another guard or something like that or okay. or you bank on Stephon Castle and Devin Vassell becoming really good three point shooters. Neither are yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm. That's my question as we currently. Are constructed right now, barring another move, maybe getting rid of Keldon or or changing some things up. We kind of have the core here: Devin, uh, Chris Paul, Harrison Barnes, Wemby, Zach Collins. Obviously, all those guys. What's the ceiling for this team as currently constructed? Put your crystal ball. Put well, your crystal forty-five ball for me. Okay, the ceiling. You know, I don't know. I I spit too high last year. Now I'm a little gun shy. We're, we're so we're so hurt by last so, year. Yes, we really are. So I think we all predicted around 40 games last year. I don't year. know. Did we ever check to see if this was true that there was a bonus kicker for Chris Paul? It is. There is. It was 32, 32 or 33. Wins. Okay. What, whatever team he so, ends up with. Okay. If, if he moves, if that team is over 32, okay. then he needs a kicker too. Well, then I would say. As that contract is currently constructed, I would say in the 30s would be a pretty good idea of where they seem to think, at least from the the uh, the Chris Paul camp would go, as where the, they think this season's going to go. 40 wins. I think as the if you look at how the roster kind of transformed this off season or is continuing to transform this off season, they needed three things when they came into it: veteran leadership, which they got. They needed shooting. I don't know if they've gotten that. Harrison, Bar- Barnes. Harrison Barnes is good. A little bit. But they haven't Not significantly improved the shooting around Victor. I mean, Chris Paul can shoot a little bit too, but they haven't significantly improved it. And then they needed an enforcer, which you've been talking about. Zach Collins isn't that guy. Wemby's not that guy. You saw actually a couple, maybe it was last week, when uh, France was playing Serbia, Nikola Jokic just trucked Wemby multiple times. Like literally put his elbow into his sternum and was like, all right, here, stop me. He doesn't have that. Wemby's just not that kind of player. He needs the enforcer next to him on some occasions. There's two things that they haven't done. There's one thing they have. I don't really know if they've improved the team significantly to take that like super leap into a 7-8 seed. I think 40 went – if you put the over-under at 39.5 with this current roster. It's 35 and a half. I would, I would maybe take – the under, but I, it wouldn't be by much. I don't even know if I would take that number, 39 and a half. Okay, is, let me change close. your mind. Let me change your mind, or try. They lo- They won 22 games last year. Correct. They lost 18 in a row playing Jeremy Sohan at point. Don't remind me. They're not going to do that again. They're not going to lose 18 in a row. Then, they were number one in the league with 20 games of a blown 10-point or more lead. They're not going to do that again with Chris Paul running the show. They were number two in the league in blown fourth quarter leads with 20 games where they led in the fourth quarter and blew a lead. That's not going to happen again. So given what we saw at the end of the year, seven out of their last 12 they won, against Denver, who had to win that night to get home court, and, and they did it without Keldon and Vassell, who were on the bench. And they, I they mean, were hurt at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Wimby took over. Uh, that team that, that won seven out of its last 12 down the stretch 
instead of the 18 losing a row, the blown leads, add Castle, add Paul, add Barnes. To me, that's a 42-win team going in. So they probably get into the play-in tournament. Now, seven, I, seven, I also eight, said nine, last ten. year that they win 40 games. <laughs> well, you weren't the only one. We're so. hurt. We are hurt by that yeah. last year. But I think they are now the team that we thought they were going to be last year because they're not going to be just screwing around for 18 games in a row playing Jeremy Sohan at point guard. That's true. If that's the ceiling, if 40, let's say 45, 45 is, the is the ceiling. Let's say 45 is the ceiling. What's the floor? Is the floor uh, is the floor a, a, a season like we saw last year? Injury. Uh, Wimby's healthy. Wimby's healthy. What's the floor? Let's let's assume health. I mean, obviously, health is one of the biggest factors in anything. Health can derail any prediction. So let's assume everyone's healthy or generally healthy. Thirty-two. Thirty-two is the floor. I'd say it's similar to what the ceiling is, right? I mean, it's really kind of hard to tell at this point because I but, mean, mostly and historically, how many times do teams? double their win total from the year before. It doesn't happen very often, but not to say that it can't happen here. I mean, I think there were some positive things that happened towards the end of last year, and if they play like that to start the year, I mean, I've said it a million times, this is a league that's ripe to be had. There's four or five really good teams, and then everybody else is kind of meh. To that, to that end, I mean, it is hard to tell, but I just don't know if they've improved that shooting aspect enough. It's just, yeah. And Vegas isn't impressed. They're picking thirty-five and a half, and Vegas is never off that much. Yeah, that's what concerns me. But I don't know if Vegas is really paying attention. They're paying attention maybe to roster players. This is exactly but, what we said last year. But the Sohan experiment just destroyed them last year. The- Here's the X factor, which no one's talking about, is don't put a ceiling on Wemby's improvement. That's fair. Because that dude. The over-under last year was 29 and a half, and we all sat, not right here, but in these seats upstairs, saying that it was way too low, yeah. markedly too low, that they would win 40 games with Wemby yeah. at the helm, and, and that we that we would see drastic improvement from Devin and Jeremy and all these guys. Sure enough, they crapped out. We, we knew our predictions were dead by, by Christmas. Two things mm-hmm. happened. Pop decided to just watch for a month and see where Wemby wanted a to play. A month? Two months. Watch where Wimby wanted to play. Then they moved him to where he could be successful. And then they sat back and watched Jeremy just go into the clown car. <laughs> it was it, What they were doing on the court was absolutely just – wasn't even basketball. Okay, Pop you know? watched until the All-Star break. Pop didn't do – I don't want to say he didn't do. I don't want to say he didn't do much, but you didn't see the coaching on the floor. You didn't see. They were that. experimenting. They were experimenting until the All Star break, and then yeah. they got to the All Star break, and they're like, "All right, this is how we're going to do things here." Yeah. And then they got better. So I don't know. You, you did any- remember all those things on that were written on the board too. Yeah. I, I mean, that was that, yeah, pretty sticking, telling. That's sticking with you. Yeah. Throw him the dang ball. In the comments, uh, Carsick Collins says Wemby also has a full season of acclimation to the NBA. Remember, he. Uh, uh, was not nearly as good as the first half of the season last year. He really blossomed later. This is basically what Don said, and now we get that from game one. I'm a little I concerned think. about his uh, usage. He's going through this whole – this isn't really an off season for him. He's obviously yeah. going to play in the Olympics. He played late in the last year. I mean, he's just – he hasn't had a lot – I know he's 20, but he's seven foot four, and I get worried about his about, – I'm worried about him. Hey, Here. one other comment. Um, He's twenty from Vallis. <laughs> I remember those days. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he says, uh, "Why is everyone on the show such a vassal hater, Vassell hater?" I'm not a Vassell hater. I, I, I like Devin Vassell. I think he's very, uh, he's really talented offensively, and he's a good defender too. Uh, I was frustrated with him at times early last season for not facilitating more to Wemby, but he got better at that in the pick and roll. He did, especially late in the season. Not a hater of Devin at all. I, I think Devin's super talented. I forgot the game. I think you, you and I were watch. It was, I think we were watching it together here uh, in the sports department. There was a game when they were down by two, needed a basket. Wemby rolled to the bucket and was wide open, and De- Devin Vassell takes a twenty eight footer and it yeah. clanks off the rim. And I was, we were both sitting really here, deep. Three. We were both sitting here like, what are you doing? And it was just too many of those things last year that that just bugged me about Devin. I could see the play. I don't remember I saying s- anything bad about Devin Vassell. No, we got. Oh, yeah, but we, you never said anything good, Chuck. I'm sure. Well, <laughs> we got it's a little, it's a baseball little, a little season, Matthew. For, to, to Don here from Michael Esperanza, he oh, says, uh, 
I hope the Spurs trade for DeJounte so Don would have to eat his words. They're not trading for DeJounte. <laughs> yeah. He just got traded. So What were my words? <laughs> I don't know. I did, you, had a, you had a pretty I, hot I, take you, on DeJounte, on DeJounte a little while ago. Look, DeJounte's a good player. He was extremely immature, and there was a reason they didn't uh, – the reason they parted ways. All right. Ceiling 45, uh, floor 32. Whatever gets uh, Chris Paul's bonus, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I, that, that's exactly what I would say. Yeah, I mean, I think that – and that's better. That's improvement. And that's – I think a lot of Spurs fans would take 40 – I think a lot of Spurs fans would take a 500 record. Oh, oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. five hundred record, yep. forty-one and forty-one. Yep, Book that gets it. you Book in the right play now. in. That gets yep. you in the play in. Anything else before we move on? Move on. All right, moving on uh, to uh, Don's favorite subject. We're going to quickly, briefly talk about ESPN ranks the top one hundred athletes of the two thousands. Now, just as a preface, this is after the year. This is two thousand or later, so nineteen ninety nine doesn't count. Um, anything before two thousand does not count. So. We're just going to talk about the ones we care about here. Tim Duncan is 16. You look at who's above him just in the basketball rank. Kobe is 10. Steph Curry is 14. I don't think you can argue with those because in this ranking, you're taking away Tim's fifth championship. So if you count four championships and everything that he accomplished, you're also taking away his rookie of the year. So I think if you look at it that way, I get why he's ranked 16. But you, you look at the guys above him, Novak, Usain Bolt, Tiger Woods, Simone Biles, Roger Federer, LeBron James, Lionel Messi, Serena Williams, Michael Phelps. It's the most decorated athletes of the past 25 okay, years. Okay, what's the criteria? Yeah. How do we know that a swimmer who can't throw a ball is a better athlete than Tom Brady? Okay. What is the criteria? And how is like Tom Brady, I mean, again, if you were playing any sport, right, on the playground – would Tom Brady be one of the top five people that you would take on well, this list? Well, you're basing it on those accomplishments. You got Clayton Kershaw. Thir- Clayton Kershaw throws a baseball weird. I love Clayton C- Clayton Kershaw, but come on, man. Like well, I said, not, what's the criteria? Just ta- well, you're not just taking it on their athletic ability. Okay, you're taking, what is it? You're taking it on accomplishments and what they've what they've done in their given sport. So, given in their sport, the dominant the domination of a given sport. Yeah, and you look at Michael Phelps, and he's a 28-time medalist, okay. a 23-time gold medalist. But we're not medalist. saying he's a better athlete than yeah. LeBron James. You're saying that's, he's a more accomplished athlete. That's that. That would be more fair. Okay, okay. I could They'd get say in. it's I the most accomplished. This is stupid. Okay, <laughs> but you know what I'll say. I do have one other question no, no, no. for I'll you guys say, on this. I'll, I'll say this. Uh, this, and you said it. The worst day of the year is the day after uh, the, the All Star. The game. day after the All Star. So is that when right. this came out? Uh, because they started it I feel Monday. their pain today because it's Thursday and it's SEC Media Days. And other than Mike Elko, Chuck, what are we going to fill our shows with today? <laughs> yeah. ESPN said the same thing, yeah. so they came up with this stupid <laughs> stuff. Right. So they got an intern. They got a series of interns sitting back there and they're like, hey, you guys come no, up with something that's yes. going to cause Stephen A. Smith to lose his shit. It's sh- coaches and executives and people who voted on it. Of course. Okay. Let's see the list. Let's see the people um, that actually voted. I, the only problem – so. This is John Jones, number 66. The list is what it is. I do have a <laughs> couple of issues with it. The only issues I really have, because I, how am I supposed to know that if a cricket player who's in number 97, Virat Kohli, how am I supposed to know <sighs> he's better than Asia right. Wilson? I do have an issue with Tony and Manu not being on the list because their entire careers spanned in the 2000s. All of their accomplishments are on here. They're both Hall of Famers. They both won multiple championships. They both have the... Uh, accolades to be on this list, and you're going to put someone, I, I don't want to call anybody out, Terrell Revis over them, or Pedro Martinez over them. Like, you got yes, Lewis all great Hamilton, players. who drives a car, is not, ahead of Aaron Donald. Not an athlete. Oh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> the whole thing's ridiculous. All right, I knew this was what we were going to say, so let's <laughs> let's oh, go on. Oh, hey, uh, Chuck, who's a better athlete, Mia Ham or, or Mookie Betts? Yeah, right. Who knows? That's the question. <laughs> Me and Ham, pride of Randolph High School. Tony should be on this list. That's all I'm saying. So should Manu. Uh, last thing we want to get to today, All-Star Week has now come and gone. Uh, Chuck was part of the sights and sounds of the All-Star festivities. The uh, You were there Monday, right? Mm-hmm. Just, just Monday. So you were kind of like kid in a candy store. I would like to, before we get your... Nobody loves baseball more than Chuck. That's very true. 
Um, except for maybe Hembo on Greeny, but that's besides the point. I would like to get to quickly the worst part of uh, our entire week really quick uh, before we get to the package that you put together last night. Uh, Luis, take it away. That our flag was still there. Cover your ears. For the land <laughs> of the free. And the home of the brave. What's worse, that one or Fergie? The uh, American League uniforms were worse than that. No, they weren't. No, that that's the worst. I don't want to talk bad about Ingrid because obviously she had came out with a statement afterwards and said that she needs help and it was drunk that night and whatever. All I'm saying is I've sang drunk before. I get better, not worse. Here's why the American. <laughs> Here's in your mind in the shower, right? Yeah, I've sang at karaoke at a bar drunk before, and I thought I sounded really good. It just makes no sense. I mean, again, I don't know the gal, but I never heard of her either. It's like this is the best you can do. I mean, in Texas, right? I mean, it, yeah, like, where's it, the like, Randy out of nowhere? Man. Like, who? How much money did that record company have to pay? To slip her in the door to be able to go do this. I mean, I thought, you know, when I heard the last name Andrus, I was thinking of Ursula Andrus. Meow. You know, but <laughs> from back in the day. No? Who's that? Uh, okay, well. Go have a picture. I, Who's Ursula Andrus? Um, okay, yeah. first of all, Ingrid Andrus actually has a lot of good songs. She's a four-time Grammy nominee. Okay, well, then maybe it's me. <laughs> but she she had a horrible night, and she provided us um, the worst here's why, anthem I've ever heard. It here's, sounded, it's literally sounded like nails on a chalkboard. Here's why the American League uniforms were worse okay. than Ingrid Andrus. You know why? Because whoever designed them, including the commissioner who Nike. signed off on them, was not drunk. <laughs> <laughs> that They took it seriously and came up with that. So, did, But Fergie wasn't drunk either. She just stylistically wanted to... Perform the national anthem that way. Shaka Khan did a really bad my, one too. My general observation from this is this. Were you in the building during the national anthem? No, we left after we did all the media stuff uh, on Monday. But like the players that are representing the game right now, to me, are great brand ambassadors for the game. And it's just amazing to me that on all levels, it seems like the league stifles their ability to just be themselves. I mean, they're funny, they're engaging. You know, people that I thought kind of got, you know, my image of, like Bryce Harper, affable, nice, friendly, you know, not the image that I had of him going in before, we, you know, judge, smiles, is congenial, has thoughtful things to say, and, you know, they all talk great about each other. And then you have, you know, it takes an hour to get your credential and get in the building. It just looks like it, everything seems like it's not run very well. And then, you know, Rob Manfred, you know, bless his heart. I'm sure he's doing the best he can, but you know, he goes to the, the draft and, you know, he gets booed for, you know, some of the stuff that he's done in the past. And then, you know, and then he tries to go out there at some point again, and he takes a little kid with him, hoping that nobody will boo him, and they boo him anyway, and then he gets mad. It's like, well, what, I mean, what are you doing? All I mean, this is just like this imaging from the management side doesn't f mesh well with what they could be doing on the player side to help build the game. I mean, this there's never been more talent and talented guys. I mean, Ellie De La Cruz, this guy looks like J.J. Watt in a baseball uniform. I mean, he's huge. Same Jaren, Fantastic Jaren, care, by the Jaren way, too. Jaren too. Right. Like, I mean, there's so many good things, and these guys are so much fun to watch and so talented in the things that they can do. And yet I feel like none of that gets branded that way. There's, uh, the, the United, most sports fans in America don't know who Ellie De, De La Cruz is. Right. And he is... Phenomenal. Breathtaking. Right. Yeah. It's, and Instead, it's, we get brawny. Right, but it's like, you know, the NBA. I mean, there's a reason why they're on ESPN all the time in terms of their programming, because it's written in their contract. Why doesn't baseball have something like that? And don't tell me it's not sellable, because it 100% is. I mean, I'm just not sure I get the direction from the 40,000-foot view 
that Manfred and those that run the league want to take it compared to what they have and what they could be selling. To your point about how congenial the players are, I pulled your package from last night. You want to intro intro what that was? The all the nice little bites that you put oh, together. Oh yeah, I mean, so like you know, we're there for it's cool. It's one stop shopping, right? Great player here, great player here, great player here. You get forty minutes with each league to talk to the stars. Astros notwithstanding, because nobody was there from the Astros, which is weird. But yeah, and this is what we got. Some of it. Black olives. I can't get behind those. I'm just trying to be safe. Trey Turner speed. <laughs> what a slide. A slide? I like his slide. Have yeah. you ever tried to teach you that, or have you ever, you know, how did you do that? <laughs> I don't know. He's smooth with it, though. Someone told me I slept with socks on, and that was, that was kind of funny. You know, I feel like that's a real insult. I'm sorry if any of you wear socks when you sleep. Maybe 2017 in high, I didn't go to the All-Star game, but I got pitch of the year of the league, so I didn't really understand that one. Pretty crazy. Ain't no mountain high enough, maybe? And would you give us a little sample? No, absolutely not. Carlos, <laughs> were you ever an All-Star snub growing up at any level, Little League or otherwise? <laughs> I don't know. I will have to ask my dad. This is so self-deprecating. I guess, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Water polo, something really big. I can't swim very well, so I uh, I think just watching them do that and then play a sport, also knowing what's going under the water, is crazy to me. Uh, I'm like, oh my god, it's the best sport ever. Agreed. I mean, like anti- you said, very I'm, very affable and uh, congenial. To play yeah. I'm anti black olive, so I totally yes. agree with Stephen Kwan. Yeah. <laughs> black olives For suck. Me, not worse than beets. Do you like black, God, black beets, olives? Beets, beets. I like black olives. Do you like actual, do you like uh, regular olives? Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Like do you like olives? olives? olives are yeah, great. I do. Olives are great. Beets are good, too. What are you talking about? Ooh, beets are beets are, no, no. Beets no. suck. You know, uh, Miss Ellie's Pizza, who's now out of business, used to make a little uh, kind of a Caesar salad, and all they put on it was the lettuce, Parmesan cheese, and black olives. Simple. Guess what we could do? And the dressing. It was delicious. I would never go to a restaurant and order that. Not because of the olives, because I can do that at home. Like, yeah. <laughs> Fair. Also, the other point in there, um, if you sleep with socks on, you're, I don't know how to help you. Do you uh, okay, well, you don't sleep with my wife. Do you sleep with socks on? <laughs> Wait, Dude, what? I, <laughs> let me tell you something. I wasn't going to go there. <laughs> no. She, uh, I, I, that, wait, I do we want I this? She doesn't tune in on this no. one. That's Let's a, just to stop it right here. That's a thermostat <laughs> reference. <laughs> that's a ther- that's a I got to go do a zoom. <laughs> thermostat <laughs> reference. It is so cold in my house that I sleep with pajama bottoms, socks, pajama top. Sometimes that hoodie that I wore in here last. Like it's colder in my bedroom than it is in here right now. Okay, I quick socks story. Jordan's best friend and my best friend, two separate people, Devin and uh, Caleb, they both sleep with socks on. For my my roommate Caleb, my college roommate, the second he gets out of the shower, socks are on. I don't think I've ever actually seen his feet, and I lived with him for like two years. Like I don't understand some people's fascination with socks. I don't like socks that much. Depends Sock, on the weather, especially when you're sleeping. Like it just gets hot. No, does not get hot in my house. Um, Chuck. Last last word last word on the All Star Wars Awards. Game. Yeah, no, Temperature I'm, wise, I, I like it for for All Stars All Star games at any sport. This is the best one. I mean, it's hard to not. I mean, it's hard to fake your way through. You know, getting into a batter's box and a guy throwing 104. You know, I mean, there's some competition there, and you know, doesn't always make for the great theater. You know, the, the game the other night was close, but it was you know there were moments, but compared to football and. The NBA used to have a really good one, but that's devolved. Yeah, that one sucks now. Quick um, prediction. Quick prediction. Yeah. My prediction is is when Cyber Bob Gambert uh, promotes this podcast today, this week, uh, the clip that he's going to use is, you're not sleeping with my wife. What's going on on the latest sneakers and cleats? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to use the dot, you sitting here erect part. Oh, you'll we clip st- them together. We started yeah. with that today. Uh, real quick, there was a... You'll clip the two of them together. I'm sitting erect. You're not sleeping with my wife. What is Don Harris doing on sneakers and cleats? Nothing hot happening in my house. QR code, QR code on your screen right now. Um, there, was a, there was a request on our last episode uh, on YouTube from Media Man-A-Man that said that you do the best Avery Johnson impression. 
Um, so so he, tired. He wants to hear it before we... I told him I'd get you to do it before we leave. It's so tired. It's so old. Uh, okay, ask me a question as Avery. What would you interview Avery Johnson today as? Avery, what was your favorite moment as a spur? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know, I think getting confident as we coach Pop won the championship in 99. Yeah, that's good. How's the family? Tell them I said hi. All right, that's good. There you go, media man. man. Uh, everyone, else, everyone else, we will be back with a full football yeah. show on Monday. That's we, good. Football is starting next week. Dallas Cowboys camp uh, kicking off on Thursday, yeah. actually. I think the media starts on Wednesday. Yeah. Zach is getting out there on Tuesday. All We're right. going to have a great... Grand old My time. man. We'll try to stay on the rails on Monday, too. That's it for the Sneakers Cleats podcast. Remember to download, rate, yeah. review. We'll see you back here on Monday. That's good.